This is Monica from Ruby Soup with Pearl Juice, and today we're doing something a little bit different. This is a segment I like to call Sorting by Fandom, which means that I'm making an invincible sorting hat here. I'm gonna take a fandom and I'm gonna smash it together with the Harry Potter fandom. I'm gonna sort characters from this specific fandom into the different Hogwarts houses. Um, for those who don't know, the Harry Potter books are about a boy called Harry who finds out that he is a wizard and he goes off to a boarding school called Hogwarts where they teach witches and wizards to do stuff with their magic. And how they divide up the kids is that they have four houses. There's the Hufflepuffs that are known for being very loyal and easygoing. There's the Ravenclaws who are known for being wise and for their ambition and how they like to seek knowledge. There's the Slytherin people who are very cunning and kind of like manipulative and they can be both good and bad but manipulative. Uh, they also have a tendency to be a little bit elitist. And then there's the Gryffindor people who are kind of like known for being very brave and very um, out there. So yeah. Uh, and today, the fandom that I'm going to use is Death Note. Death Note is a anime and manga. Unfortunately, in this video, I'm going to have to go with the anime because that's what I'm more familiar with. So yeah, let's get started. So, uh, Death Note, uh, I should also probably say that if you haven't seen the anime or read the manga, don't watch this video. It's going to be spoilerific. And I'm going to be mostly talking about talking in a way that's more aimed at people that have seen it. So let's get started. So the first people we should maybe sort is the five people that used the Death Note. Uh, officially, people usually say that it was only four people that used the Death Note. But I kind of counted as five because Takata, she does use certain pages from the Death Note. So I count her as one of the Death Note users. Um, but nevertheless, so, the first person who used the Death Note was Light Yagami, uh, a brilliant but quite bored student who, when he gets the Death Note, he decides he's going to become God of the New World. Now, definitely from the fact that he, as he says himself, he is a positive thinker and he has this very elaborate plan that he's going to kill off all the criminals and become God of the New World. So that, that is very ambitious. If that's not ambitious, I don't want to know what is ambitious. And throughout the whole series, the reason why Light gets so far that he does is because he is really cunning and very manipulative and can be very deceitful. So he is a very typical Slytherin. He is probably one of the most Slytherin characters ever written. And then when we go to the next person who used the Death Note, uh, Misa Amane, or Amane Misa. Uh, sorry, um, Amana Misa, if we're going to go by Japanese um, way of saying names. Um, she was kind of just using the, the Death Note to get Light's attention. And her whole character was very much based around kind of just wanting to impress the original Kira. So she is not nearly as ambitious. However, the fact that she kind of goes with this crazy plan in the first place uh, doing this hijacking of Sakura TV just to get some guy's attention it uh, it's not maybe the smartest thing but it most certainly is very ballsy uh, very out there and very kind of courageous so she definitely is a Gryffindor um, because she most certainly is very brave <laughs> in that way and then the third person Higuchi who was a businessman who he says in the in the anime that he wants to become a very important CEO he wants to get a lot of respect and a lot of power and when he finds out that Misa used to be the second Kira he decides absolutely that he also wants to get a beautiful wife so his hunger for power and his hunger for things just kind of grows and he most certainly he's not very bright he kind of considers himself a little bit more smarter than what he actually is but he most certainly is very driven and he has this very clear image in his head of what he wants 
so he would be a Slytherin. And I guess like a lot of people would say that he doesn't really count as a Slytherin because he's not very bright. But actually in the Harry Potter books, uh, there's certain characters like Grab and Goyle. I mean, they weren't very bright, but they were in Slytherin anyway. So let's say that Higuchi is kind of like those two. He's one of these few, um, a little bit more slow Slytherins. <laughs> um, and then we get to the fourth Kira, Teru Mikami. Or well, Mikami Tero. He um, he he's a lawyer, so he is very bright. But he doesn't have the same kind of ambition that Light and Higuchi have. And I don't know if he's he's not really all that out there as Misa is. Tero is a lot more. He's kind of like in his own world. He's very super organized. He has his whole schedule. He's very much a lone wolf. But he, as mentioned, he is a he's a lawyer. He's a prosecutor, and he is able to, for instance, deceive people in certain ways. And you kind of have to be a little bit, uh, you have to be a little bit of a powerhouse persona if you're going to be a very good prosecutor, actually. And he's able to, for instance, make certain connections, like he finds Takata and makes her the spokesperson for Kira. So he can be very smart and intelligent in that way, but he's not really ambitious. He doesn't mind being at the back seat. He doesn't mind not being, like he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want glory and fame, like Light and Higuchi. But he still wants to use the death note because he has his clear vision about what he wants the world to be like. And he is willing to kind of do elaborate schemes to get there. So I would actually say that he is a Ravenclaw. So that, yeah, so I think Mikami is a clear Ravenclaw. Now the last person who used the death note was Takara Kiyomi. And uh, she actually even... If you guys remember, she even hid some Death Note in her bra. Uh, and she's a little bit more like light in that way, that she's really driven. She likes attention. She She's even like, she's a news reporter of sorts, but also kind of like borderline celebrity. And she kind of like, she kind of uses her image of being refined and dignified and classy to kind of get people to admire her and do things for her. And she most she also is um, like she f- shares very similar philosophies that Light and Mikami have, but she's yeah, but she is definitely more uh, flashy, and she is a little bit more driven and ambitious as a person. She is kind of like she does have her own ace in the hole. She wants to become the goddess of the new world, so she is definitely a Slytherin. Very much like, uh, she's actually very much just Slytherin in the same way that Light is a little bit. So then if we move on to the policemen that are trying to take down Kira, we have Light's dad, Sochiro. Yeah, I think that's how you say his name, Sochiro. And we kind of know a lot, he's kind of like perhaps, along with Matsuda, I would say he's perhaps... Him and Matsuda are the only two noble kind characters in the TV series. And Sochiro is a, he's a very fair cop. He, like, he tries to negotiate with Melo instead of just killing him, even if he has the Shinigami eyes. And he, throughout the whole series, we see him several times being, like, he's actually not all that hostile towards Matsuba. He actually talks to Matsuba with respect. And he, there's that scene where he sees that people are dying at the Sakura broadcast when Misa has done the hijacking and she's killing people with a death note. And by that time they have figured out that there's someone who can kill people by just seeing you. But he still gets into this truck and he drives through the, the war house, which, you know, just as a side note, that is, that's why... Despite what everybody says, that's why the Netflix movie didn't succeed. Because they did have this masterpiece of a scene where Sochiro gets into this truck and <laughs> slams into the into the <laughs> building. I mean, well, what are you doing if you take if you take that out of an adaption? 
but anyway, this scene kind of does show that even if it's highly dangerous and he most likely could die, he, he still does it. And the same thing was when he was negotiating with Mello. Mello is like really unstable and really dangerous, but he still tries to negotiate with him even if he clearly has the upper hand with the Shinigami eyes. So I would say that Chochiro is very much, um, despite, despite maybe being a little bit more known for his uh, nobleness, I would say that he d he is very clearly a Gryffindor because he is very courageous and very brave and he is not afraid to kind of go out there and put his own life on the line. So he is a very clear Gryffindor. Now if we get to Matsuda, uh, Matsuda is kind of like the fearless fool of the TV series. He's not particularly worried about anything. He he ha he likes being this super agent that's going after Kira. But the thing that's kind of like, and the, I mean, like a lot of people in the TV series, a lot of characters are very irritated with him because, I mean, I understand he would be very annoying as a co-worker because he's not the most smartest person in the world. But uh, Matsuda is a very easygoing guy. He's very nice. He's very kind. And he's... In his own way, he's kind of humble because when people call him an idiot, as they do in the English dub in the anime, he doesn't really argue. He says once to Elle that, oh, you know, I can still hear you, but he doesn't, like, argue back. And he's... And, like, when the chips are down, he's always really loyal to Sochiro, and he is very loyal to the policeman, even if he sometimes thinks that Kira might have a point. And... He's actually nice enough to actually weigh both sides and think about the several viewpoints. So I would say that he is he's probably the closest that you have to a Hufflepuff in the series. Yeah, he's very easygoing, but he's also extremely loyal. And he, when the chips are down, he actually is there for his co-workers and for others. And he can actually pull off quite incredible things. So Matsuda is a clear Hufflepuff. Um, I, and I guess well, now we should get to L. Uh, L is very, very similar to Light. Uh, he also gets bored very easily. He only takes the most difficult cases. Uh, and specifically, he likes cases with serial killers. And he's very manipulative. Uh, he is... Like, the whole series is basically about... L's and Light's mind game and how they uh, manipulate each other and try to... They had this whole cat and mouse game going on. So, yeah. And L also is, like, not particularly... I mean, he's kind of polite, but he's not particularly nice, if we're going to be honest. He's... Uh, I think the creators have actually even said that L is slightly evil. And he's not particularly loyal. He doesn't seem to have any close friends or anything like that. And if he's brave, well, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell because he hides his face quite often and that kind of stuff. But he most certainly he most certainly is very cunning and he's very manipulative. And he is very ambitious because he only takes the most difficult cases. Uh, despite that meaning that he actually has a significant lack of empathy. So he is, like a lot of characters in this TV series, he is a, a very clear Slytherin. Uh, but after L dies, we have, uh, like I said, spoilers. <laughs> after L dies, there are two runner-ups at the Whammy Orphan's house, um, Mello and Nier. And now Nier, I would say, he is very cunning and he is very manipulative, but he is not as ruthless as what L is. And he he's a little bit more idealistic, I would say, than L is. L is supposed to be a little bit idealistic, but I wouldn't say too much. He I mean he does L does talk about justice, this and that, but it's more an informed attribute. While Nier actually seems to be more like inclined to work with the government and to play he doesn't play as much dirty games i mean i know that, like there's spe speculation that he was controlling mikami's actions at the end but that is more like an ambiguous situation and also in the anime 
that is not the case at all. So like I said, this is more going from the anime. Uh, Nier doesn't play as much dirty, but he is very smart and he is very creative. And he's always like, you know, the way he's playing with these toys, it kind of shows even how he's thinking. And he has a very creative way of, of, of exploring knowledge and information. So I would actually say that Nier is, in fact, the Ravenclaw. All right, and I think there was Nier. We can end there and uh, tune in next time for part two where I'll go through even more characters. I'll, I'll sort out the Shinigami characters and I'll sort Mellow somewhere. So, um, yeah, I'll see you next time.